In a recent video we checked out the Pentium MMX 166 and we found out it's a fantastic processor because you can slow it down and play those speed sensitive DOS games. But what if you want to extract the most performance out of this machine? So this is the main board we used, it's the Gigabyte 586 ATX. What if you want the best processor? tweak the bar settings to get the most performance, run some utilities and also max out the RAM. What sort of performance can you get out of this machine? Well, let's find out. As for the other parts, we're using the same S3 Trio 64 graphics card from Diamond. We have the same sound card, it's an ESS audio drive. And for storage, we're using the winning combination of the GoTek USB floppy emulator together with a StarTech ID to SATA adapter and a 32 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. Let's begin with the RAM. You might be tempted to max it out, but be careful. In the user manual and on the website, it mentions 256 megabytes of maximum RAM and I've tested this. However, the devil is in the detail. We have a chipset diagram here. The chipset used in this main board is the Intel 430TX and it has a cacheable memory size of only 64 megabytes. This means if you install more than 64 megabytes of RAM, the performance will go down, especially under Windows. Under DOS, when I did the tests, I didn't really notice much of a difference. I forgot the, uh, I can't remember the exact details, but I believe it's how DOS addresses the memory it will use the cacheable memory first and then if you use more than 64 megabytes then you will lose performance whereas on Windows I believe it's the opposite, something like that, but don't quote me. And yeah, the bottom line is for maximum performance at all times stick with 64 megabytes of RAM on such a main board. I believe that's heaps even for Windows 95. We can also tweak the motherboard BIOS to get optimal performance. Let's take a look. Here we are in the BIOS. Let's start with tweaking by loading the setup defaults and then we go into the chipset features setup. Here we can change the memory timings or the wait states. And basically what we want to do is pick the fastest memory timings or the least amount of wait states. So we're going to toggle all the options until we see the lowest numbers available and that will give us the best performance. And there's another setting over here. There you go. Did you know there are some software tools that we can run to boost the performance of the S3 Trio 64? There are some tools that we can run to improve the performance of our S3 PCI video card. Dietmar, he wrote these two utilities. The first one is S3 VBE 20 that enables some VESA extensions and linear frame buffer support. And the second tool can speed up VGA and VESA graphics performance, but it's not compatible with mode X. So that's why we're not benchmarking Doom in this video. So now we have the machine configured with optimal amount of memory. We tweaked the BIOS and we also used some software tools to extract more performance out of the graphics card. Let's start with upgrading the CPU and test the faster MMX models running at 200 and 233 megahertz. And here we have the results. So at 320 by 200 we can definitely see a nice scaling going on. In Quake not so much to be honest. Maybe here the video card is holding things back and especially at the 640 by 480 resolution tests I can also see there's not too much of a performance boost happening. In the user manual, we can see the supported processors and it seems to top out at 233 MHz models with the Intel, but also with the Cyrix and IBM. And we can see the same thing on the Gigabyte website. However, if we click on support and check out the latest BIOS release, this is from August 1998, Look at that, it mentions the AMD K62 running at 400 megahertz. Now, 400 megahertz is the highest you can go because this board only supports 66 megahertz bus and the highest ratio you can configure is 6x, 66 times 6 is 400. 
It mentions here you need to configure the 2x ratio on the main board. This is because Socket 7 boards do not have a 6x ratio, it doesn't exist. So AMD decided if it detects a 2x ratio being configured on the motherboard, the processor will use a 6x ratio. In the user manual, this is the most important part. It shows you the configuration of the DIP switches. The first switch toggles between 60 and 60 megahertz of the bus speed. Then these DIP switches set the CPU multiplier and here you can configure the voltage. Now, this, in, this setting is interesting. It's auto configuration. It worked fine with the Pentium MMX CPU, but it didn't work with the other processors. So if you're using a CPU like an AMD that uses a voltage of 2 or 2.1, you wanna configure it manually. So let's find out what the performance is like with an AMD K6 II. This is a 500 megahertz model and it will run at 400 megahertz. I configured the dip switches for a core voltage of two volts. Let's see what it can do. Here we have the results in 3D Bench. Chris's benchmark and PC player benchmark, we're getting nice improvements. Quake, however, not faster than the MMX233, maybe to do with the yeah, optimization for the Pentium architecture. At the 640 by 480 tests, also not too much of a performance gain, but it's better than nothing. With the K62, the faster models, there's another utility that we can run. It's this one here, K6WCX. This will enable write combining. And I've done a video previously on the channel that goes into more detail what options you need to enter. So here's the result of activating write combining on the K62400. 3D Bench went up the most. Chris's benchmark hasn't really changed much. PC Player benchmark went down a little bit. Same with Quake, but it's really just one or two FPS. The biggest gain, however, look at that. The 640 by 480 results are much better. Uh, we have Chris's benchmark running now at 67.6 and the PC player benchmark at 36.4. That is very nice. We're not finished yet. There are more processors. This one is next. It's the AMD K6 II Plus, a mobile CPU, but the highlight is it has extra additional cache on the CPU, giving it a performance boost, but it's not supported. Not sure if it's going to work. So let's drop it in and see what happens. There you go, I paused the screen, it turned on just fine. V-Core, two volts. The clock speed is misdiagnosed. Let's have a look if everything works. On my DOS benchmark pack, we can find Jan's check CPU. Let's have a look. It identifies the K6 II+, 400 megahertz, 6X multiplier, 66 megahertz bus speed. Yeah, that checks out just fine. Here are the results, 3D Bench, wow, 411.6. Also, Chris's benchmark improves and also the PC Player benchmark. Let's check Quake, well, not much has changed. It's still at 52.9 and at 640 by 480, yeah, we're getting a little bit extra performance, not too much, but especially the PC Player benchmark is now running at 44.3. Jan has a really awesome website with lots of information about the K6 II Plus and K6 III Plus, including patched biases ready to go that add support for these processors and also fix the hard drive capacity limitations. Unfortunately, our motherboard is not on the list. So we have a Gigabyte 586 ATX. I believe the reason is because it's not a super socket board. It doesn't support the higher bus speeds and doesn't have AGP. But I might send him an email with the bias. Maybe he's interested in patching it. I will let you know down below in the video description. There's one more CPU I want to test. This is the AMD K6 III Plus. Very similar to the 2 Plus, but it has double the level two cache directly on the CPU. Again, it's not supported, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work just like the K6 II Plus. Let's run Jan's check CPU utility. Yes, it checks out. K63 plus 400 megahertz, multiplier six, bus speed 66 megahertz. So that's 
looking like everything is working. Here we have the results. The numbers are higher across the board. Look at 320 by 200. I believe we already have enough performance. Quake now finally sees an improvement, 58.4 and the 640 by 480 high resolution tests we also get a nice performance boost chris's benchmark now 83.5 which is terrific and the pc player benchmark yeah another fps 45.7 so now that we have a machine that is much more capable at running games at 640 by 480 let's test a game that really stresses this machine it is Nothing other than Tomb Raider. I don't think this game needs too much of an introduction. I remember when it came out on the Sony PlayStation. I played it there, but in my opinion, it's a little bit better on the PC, especially if you play at high resolution or if you have a 3D effects voodoo. Now, this video, because I wanted to keep it more centered around the CPU performance, we're using the software render. Now, a bit of a complaint towards GOG, I have the game from GOG, but they don't give you the original ISO images. So I had to reverse engineer the disk, so to speak. They ship the game with DOSBox and inside you'll find the like a bin Q uh, disk image format, but the audio tracks are compressed. So I had to basically reverse engineer the disk by converting the mp3 files into WAV files and then burning a mixed mode disk. Bit of a pain in the neck, but I managed to this way reverse engineer a installation disk and yeah, drop it in the machine, install it and off you go. An interesting nugget of information, the installer, when you uh, choose the sound card, you can choose a Soundblaster Pro or the ESS audio drive and on the ESS it will apply a filter, it will sound less tinny, um, so maybe it's a high pass filter, filtering out some of those high frequencies. Let's go adventuring. Let's go adventuring. Let's go adventuring. Let's go adventuring. The game seems to be running just fine, maybe not at the maximum frame rate and definitely not as silky smooth as you have on a 3DFX Voodoo, but it's a huge improvement compared to how this game performed on the Panium. In terms of gameplay, it's been a while since I played it and yeah, it's quite hard. The first level is quite easy, but the second one already massive um, level and you get lost a little bit, but um, yeah. And then towards the end, I just die because there are some traps that I just didn't see coming and I saved like too far. Uh, in the past and yeah that's how games were back in the day a lot of frustration saving very frequently and uh, that's the good thing about this game you can save at any time and manage your save games so yeah the controls also at first a little bit finicky um, likely because i haven't played it too much but yeah the muscle memory kicks in soon and then it's not too bad also something interesting, I did buy a retail copy, the sold out software release, but on this one, I didn't get the audio CD music playing for some reason, it just played static. So maybe this release just doesn't have the audio tracks, I'm not quite sure. So as always, I recommend buy the game legally on GOG or another digital platform, and then just head to archive.org, get the disc image, and burn it. That way you're not missing out on any quality aspects like compressed audio tracks. I almost completed the second level, played around half an hour and yeah, it definitely brought back some happy memories. I do miss the 3DFX Voodoo graphics, however, I, I must admit it. The software render, it looks nice, it has more details, but it does look a bit rough and raw and there are some perspective uh, errors going on as well. I think they just, yeah, cut some corners with the engine to get good performance out of this game. Still, it's nice seeing this upgraded machine handling the game reasonably well, and it's definitely a game I recommend playing, especially if you're a little bit older and you never played the first Tomb Raider games. I think they're worth checking out. So what are my thoughts and recommendations 
we saw that with some bias tweaking, some software tools, and upgrading the processor, you can really boost the performance even on a machine where the front side bus is limited. Now, should you do that? Well, it depends. I'll give you my opinion. I believe maxing out such a machine, it will still fall short in many aspects of going with a Pentium 3 or Pentium 4. They will just totally obliterate this machine in terms of performance, especially at 640 by 480. There's only so much you can squeeze out uh, from a machine where the, the front side bus is limited. And so my recommendation is I see such a machine much better put to use with DOS gaming and slowing it down. That way you also avoid a lot of the retro price inflation. You can go with average parts. Slow is good, you know. Doesn't have to be the top AMD K6 3 Plus. You can get away with a regular Pentium MMX 166, some cheap 32 or 16 megabytes of RAM module. It doesn't have to be a fancy S3 from Diamond. It can be any PCI video card, really. Even ISA, that's something I want to look at in a future video. Did you know that installing an ISA video card will also slow down the gaming performance? That's another, another hack for slowing down your machine. And it might actually give you smoother FPS, uh, more consistent FPS. So yeah, that might be a topic for a future video. So while this was fun and it was interesting seeing how much performance we can squeeze out, I think it's not something I would recommend. It doesn't really resonate with me. If you want a machine that performs well under DOS, go with a Pentium 3. That way you can still get ISA slots. Or if you want to ditch ISA, go with a Pentium 4, but then you need to find a DOS compatible PCI sound card. What are your thoughts on this whole maxing out a system from a certain time period? Really interested to hear what you think. Do you prefer maxing it out or slowing it down for those speed sensitive games? Always love to hear from you. And yeah, that's it for this video. I will leave resources, all these tools and biases uh, for the main board down below in the uh, video description because that's also what I want to do. I want to help you out building your own project, sharing the love, the passion for these old games and together building a awesome retro PC gaming community. And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.